Okay, so during this time, people are either going to be on summer break or they're going to be graduating. So during that time span of graduation and maybe finding a job, you're probably going to need something like an internship. You want to have like some sort of experience before you get to like a real job. So an internship is like the best way to actually get that experience. Now I know a lot of people are asking like, how do I get an internship? How do I apply for one? Right now the whole game basically changed because of the pandemic. So I can't say that I know the best way on how to approach this. So if you're watching this video on like how to apply for an internship, this is probably the wrong video and I might make one later in the future. But right now this current video is just about me and like telling a story of how I got my internship. So it's not like a step-by-step -step guide on like what to do, it's more of a personal, relatable story that hopefully you guys can listen to and maybe apply the same concepts on when you're applying. So this internship helped me, probably, get my current job as an environmental engineer. And I will be blunt about this, it is an unrelatable internship. So it is not like an internship that I got for like engineering, it is more towards science because that was what I graduated with during my bachelor's. So again, if you're watching this video hoping to get like an engineering internship, you're at the wrong video. But again, the concept should be the same. You're just gonna hear my personal point of view and like what I experienced as I was applying to internships. You know, any experience overall will give you some sort of leverage. So during my undergraduate, I was majoring in chemistry. So understand chemistry and environmental engineering, they are pretty different, right? So during my undergraduate, I was just working part-time student jobs on campus offered by like work study. So here in the United States, we have what's called work study. It's really just like funds that's allocated for specific part-time jobs on campus. So if you apply through FAFSA, our financial aid in the United States, they can separate certain amounts of money for students who want to work on campus. That way people or jobs on campus, they don't have to use their own money. They can just use money that's provided by the government that's set aside specifically just for you for when you work part-time. Basically, my first job was like working at a lab. I was just washing their test tubes and beakers. It's really just being like a glorified dishwasher. I was doing that because, well, one, I needed money. So when I worked there, I think I was getting paid like $8 an hour at the time, 2013 or something. I was just there for the money and to get some experience. So I would be working in the back and washing their chest and beakers. But like when you put that on the resume, you can tweak that and say, oh yeah, I worked in a lab. And so people would be like, oh, that means you're familiar with laboratory instruments or equipment. So that just you know, gives you more leverage onto your resume just because you have something written down that you know you worked you're able to juggle between school and work and at least it shows that you have some familiarity with like what's inside a lab so i did that for like a year or two i basically jumped from like one lab to another but eventually i wanted to get serious you know i wanted not just to be a dishwasher and just wash lab equipment and test tubes and beakers i wanted to actually like use my brain and work on a project so I'd be applying to like positions here and there, talking to professors, but they didn't have any open positions. So it was pretty discouraging because like they would reject me or just say that we don't have anyone or any open available positions for you to join our lab. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys here watching right now are like experiencing the same things. With the whole pandemic and like schools being closed. So you're not gonna get like as many open available positions that are allowing students to show up in person in a lab and work on some projects. But anyway, I'm sort of digressing here. So after, this is my third year, after working in these labs and eventually just jumping around, I wanted to, you know, switch focus into like finding an actual research project. Just one day out of the blue, there was like a career event that offered free food. You know, as a college student, you are pretty <laughs> enticed by free food or just like free stuff in general. So I saw that ad or like the event flyer and I was like, you know, I feel like eating dinner. So they offered dinner and some other events over there. I really just wanted the free food. So I went there. Everything was all nice and professional, you know, they had like, uh, because it's a career event, they had recruiters there and like older and wiser students, like PhD students and professors and people who would just talk about their projects or would be looking to hire some people. But again, my main focus was just to get free food. So they sat us down on a table and I met a PhD student across from my table. So she was presenting her project. As everyone sort of introduced each other into the table, you know, I didn't really listen too much about it because again, I was just there for the free food. I know I should have paid more attention to it. But, I mean, at the time, that was what I wanted. You know, after the dinner, I approached her and asked her about the project. You know, just to pique my curiosity, she told me more about it. And then, you know, I just randomly said, do you have any available positions? You know, I'm interested in maybe joining. I guess confronting her and being brave about it. I asked her, like, do you have any open positions? Because I want to learn. To my surprise, she did. So, this is the great thing about it. 
not only did I get free food, but I got this position, like, on the spot. She just said that I need someone to help me, and, you know, you're perfect for it. Yeah, so that night was amazing. I got free food, basically got a job, because that position, they also paid because it was funded through some grant that she had, so not only did I jump from, like, $8 an hour to now $10 an hour, it was during that summer that I started working there, and then that was when I got paid more, and I gained more experience because of that position, and it's really because of that whole dinner event that you know, changed my life basically. So I worked on a project during the summer, eventually that project was finished, and then after that now I'm sort of on my fourth year applying for graduate school. So now I'm in graduate school, just working as a student, and I'm not funded, I don't have a job. So like all students out there who should be worrying about their future, I'm applying to like jobs and internships and basically everywhere I can because eventually you're gonna graduate from school and you get to find something to work on. Obviously because I went from a bachelor's in chemistry to a master's in environmental engineering. I wanted like an engineering job. I wanted an engineering internship. So how can I mold myself into showing that I can do some engineering work? Or how can I at least use some experiences from my past to work on something that I want to achieve in the future, to become an environmental engineer? So I applied everywhere. You know, they had like the graduate school, they had their own career center. Used that, but I didn't have much luck in it. Eventually I did get that one cancer research internship and again this is not really related to environmental engineering at all because this is like biology. That eventually led to a full-time position just because someone left, an actual full-time person there, an employee, left and so they had to fill in that spot but because I was like an internship there I had some familiarity with that project also so they just took me in. I feel like me explaining this this whole story is like sort of messy because I mean it's like internship here, internship there, and then full-time job here and you're probably not following along. But fast forward, eventually this project as a full-time cancer research employee, that project got closed so I got laid off. You know it sucks to be laid off because now you like almost don't have a purpose anymore. After you're laid off you don't have a job so you feel a bit you know depressed and miserable as you're applying and looking for another job. But thankfully this is before the pandemic so I didn't have that long of a time to find a job. But really it was because I worked from that one internship, the one back in undergraduate college, that one research position from that free event for the dinner. Because of that, because I got that one, that was what really was the catalyst for me to get other positions. And really, I think that was the main reason why I was able to go into graduate school because not only was I working as an engineer in that department, but like the professor who oversaw the PhD student, she was the Dean of Engineering. And so she actually wrote my letter for when I applied for graduate school. So I had some like pretty powerful people writing my letter as I was applying for graduate school. That unrelated internship that I got from the dinner was really the main reason why I was able to get this internship from the cancer research one. It led me to get the full-time position. That full-time position, you know, it led me to develop more skills. So I was able to develop more soft skills, maybe more planning, dealing with managers, presenting information, you know, just being able to like develop my professional career. It all started from that one internship, that one free dinner. And so even though that internship was really unrelated to becoming an environmental engineer, the skills learned in that was what really gave me this job. That's why I think that no matter what job you have, no matter how unrelated in a field or a subject you're actually pursuing, anything that you do that is out of your comfort zone or anything that you do to develop yourself or grow more, that's what's gonna eventually give you what you want. You might not even see like a direct impact on what you're doing if you're working at like say Starbucks and you want to become an engineer. What you're doing as a customer service, like that is a main aspect of environmental engineering. So don't beat yourself thinking that, you know, you're stuck working at this job, you know, waiting tables, that you can't become better than that just because it's considered like a low income job. Okay, that's all I have. Goodbye.